everyone, and welcome once again to Rams Revealed. I'm JB Long. The Rams, as you know, are three and zero, and they're set for another undefeated showdown at SoFi Stadium. This time, this week, it's the Arizona Cardinals to open up NFC West competition, and we're fired up for a first-time guest, third-year defensive tackle Greg Gaines is with us this week. Uh, Greg, how's your victory Monday going? How did that win over Tampa Bay feel? It's going pretty good. That was a that was a huge win because that was pretty much, I mean, the same team that won the Super Bowl last year. And I felt like we played a really good game in all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. And it's, yeah, it just feels good. So one thing that I think we noticed from the outside is just how much joy this particular team is taking in each week and each win. I think about Sean McVay's reaction on the sideline against Tampa Bay as exuberant as I've ever seen him. Do you sense that as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just like, I mean, we were playing good. It's easy to have good energy. Like everyone's just like, we've been playing great the last three weeks and everyone's feeding off that same energy and having fans back is pretty awesome as well. Being able to hear the crowd and stuff. So for sure, there's a lot of energy this year and it's, it's a good feeling. That's a good call out that the crowd being back uh, inside SoFi Stadium makes a big difference. It changes things a lot. <laughs> Does it, do you sense that you have the greatest home field advantage since you've been a professional? I, I mean, it gets pretty loud in there. We've got the, we got the Buccaneers that jump off sides a couple times there. So I think that's, that's huge. It impacts your defense too, though, does it not, Greg? Some, uh, some adjustments going back from last season to this season in terms of making your, uh, your calls at the line? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a little bit harder to communicate, a little bit harder to hear the linebackers calling stuff out and whatnot. And, but it's not, I don't know, it's not, it's not too bad so far. We've been able to do pretty well. There's been, I think there's only like one instance so far where I, didn't, I wasn't sure what the linebacker was saying. I had to look back at him. And, but other than that, it's, it's been pretty good. I think it's an advantage for us because we're pretty good at communicating with hand signals and stuff like that. Yeah, a worthwhile exchange to make Tom Brady and the Buccaneers go silent count, right? Yeah. Hey, Greg, are you a celebrity guy at all? Like, do you get starstruck? No, not really. I, you didn't. You didn't seem the type. But <laughs> given the uh, the A listers that were there over the weekend, did you look up and see anyone on the infinity screen and think, "Wow, he or she is here to watch our Rams"? Yeah, I saw uh, Dr. Dre was there. That's pretty cool. But yeah, like, you, like I said, I'm not a huge fanboy of anything. Or but oh, I thought it was funny they put up a guy. I don't. I don't know who it was. It just said Steve. And I was like, oh, there's Steve's here, apparently. <laughs> no last name, it's just Steve. They get, they get starstruck when they see you. Um, let's talk a little bit about your position group, because we've heard all about dog work, and we've spoken to Aaron and Ashawn and Bash and others. Uh, privileged to get to speak to you now about what it means to be a part of this defensive front. And I'm especially curious, Greg, what do you see as your unique skill set and role within the group? Um, I mean, I love playing with these guys. It's a great group of dudes. We have a lot of fun together. Uh, like we work hard and, uh, like just being with Aaron Donald, like being able to pass rush with him and stuff is just, it's a pretty cool experience. But, um, I think my role as is like, a am like a run stopping nose guard. That's what I'm here to do. That's what they brought me in for. I'm here to stop the run and be uh, I can play uh, any position on the D line and sub in for anyone. And that's pretty much my role right now. It may not sound very glamorous as you, you described it, but do you relish it? Do you enjoy it? <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing. I love playing the run. And how come, like, where's the glory in it? I don't know. I just like the fact that like, he's trying to like push me back. I don't know. Just beating. I'm, I guess I'm a violent person. I don't know. I like beating people up. So I think it's more fun. <laughs> Is it going too far as to say that it might be the best position group defensively in the entire national football league? Ooh, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I just, I don't want to put that out there. I think we have a great unit and I think we're we work well together. And you would have to think of the course of a 17 game season, that talent and depth is going to carry you guys to where you want to go, right? How much of an advantage is that to look around the room and see so many other talented individuals? It helps a lot because it lets us, it lets us keep guys fresh. Like you said, through the whole 17, like through four quarters even, but yeah, through 17 games, just taking some reps off some guys so that they can last for the season. And we don't really miss a beat when we sub out. So Greg, through three of those games, how would you evaluate your 2021 performance? Uh, I feel like I've been playing pretty well. I've graded out well each game. 
Um, I'm getting about 25 snaps a game, which is awesome for me. Um, yeah, I think I've, I've played well. I've been working on my pass rush this year. I feel like I'm getting a little better at that, getting some pressures. How different is it without Michael Brockers? We, we all miss Brock a lot. He, had a, he definitely brought like a certain energy. And uh, he was kind of our like vocal leader guy. And AD was our like uh, lead by example type guy. So now AD is kind of having to step up into that role of being a little more vocal. And uh, but yeah, we definitely miss Brock. He was an awesome dude to be around. And he played well, too. He's a great four tech. Probably the, I think he's one of the best in the league uh, mm-hmm. before. So. Well, he's been a veteran mentor and now let's go to the other end of the spectrum and the rookie Bobby Brown. I'm curious to get your recollection of being a first year pro uh, in his case, being inactive and needing to wait his turn and learn from those of you who are in that room. Like what's his task right now? And when his moment comes, how can he best be ready for it? Yeah, I was in a similar situation as well. I was drafting the fourth round. I was inactive for the first, well, I think I, I was active for like, the third game is a saints. Then I was inactive all the way until like week seven or something. So I've been there before. So, I mean, you just got to stay locked in and just keep practice. Like the biggest thing is just getting better at practice every day. Cause mm-hmm. he gets to get reps against the starting O line every day, a lot of reps there. So that's going to help him a lot. Like just develop. And Is it akin to red shirting for those familiar with college football? Yeah, kind of. It's just like a red shirt year kind of. Hey, I go back to your college days. And one of the things I always appreciated about you as a Husky is that you were a, let's say a uniform minimalist, right? <laughs> no gloves, no yeah. tape. I don't, do you even tape your ankles? Uh-uh. No braces. Like why has it always been that way? I mean, part of it's good fortune, right? A, a lack of injury trouble. We wish that for you the rest of your career, but why not uh, dress it up a little? I don't know. I just, I don't need anything extra. Like I don't like taping my ankles because I like having the ankle mobility like tape. I feel like I can't move as well. And it just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to tape anything if it's not hurt. Like if my like wrists are hurt, I wear a wrist brace, but like, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not big into like being preventative, I guess. Right. I don't know. Yeah. We won't ever expect you out there in an arm sleeve (laughs) or some bright yellow gloves or anything. No. Uh, Let's continue with the uh, UW theme, though. As you get set to face Arizona, it's almost like a Husky reunion. You know, you and Taylor Rapp on one side, Buda Baker, Byron Murphy coming off a two-interception game on the other. Will it be nice to see those guys? I know you get to catch up with them twice a year. Yeah, we always, like, we talk a little bit before and after the game. It's good to see those dudes. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys from UW on, on the Cardinals, I think. I'm trying to remember everybody. Fellow Husky uh, defensive tackle Vita Vea just came through with the Buccaneers. Yeah, I I talked to him after the game as well. Have you ever tried to pronounce his full name? Uh, probably. He was my roommate all four years of college, like so. He's one of my best buddies, but I cannot pronounce his full name. It's like There's eight no way. names and fifty-two letters. I think. He oh should, yeah. I think There's he should no just way. try and fit it all on a nameplate on the back of his jersey <laughs> someday. I don't think that would go well. <laughs> But back to the Cardinals, what have you learned from your handful of career matchups against Kyler Murray in this offense so far? Um, so look like the last couple of years we played him, he was, was suffering from like an injury each time. So we didn't have to like worry about his ability to scramble as much. I think he had like a pulled hamstring last time we played him. So that like helped us out a lot, but now we got a fully, fully healthy Kyler Murray to deal with. And just I've watched a couple of his games this year and he's just he's running all over the place. So we got to be able to contain. We got to be able to squeeze down the pocket and keep him in there and not leaving those like lanes to escape. Even Kyler at less than 100 percent is a much different task than dealing with someone like Tom Brady, right? Yeah. Two different types of quarterbacks. Like Tom Brady, you can pretty much rush however we want to. Don't have to worry as much about contain. But with Kyler Murray, that's it's all about the contain rush. So. Hmm. As we mentioned off the top, as I know our audience is aware, they're three and zero. You're three and zero. San Francisco almost took care of Green Bay in Week Three. Seattle's off to a one and two start, but we all think this is probably the best division in the National Football League internally. Do you see it that way? Do you and your teammates think you play in the best division? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've like even the past couple of years, it's just like our, our division is tough. We're always good. Everybody's always good in our division, and I think it is one of the best in the. In the NFL. Especially when you think about the diversity of talent and scheme 
in the offenses you're going up against, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Cliff Kingsbury in the air raid this week. There's a lot of yeah. Shanahan McVay influence now throughout the division. So week to week with these opponents that you go up against, you have to figure you're sharpening your iron against the best offenses. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, they're, they're, our division is probably one of the best. And yeah, it's, there's a lot of different, you get a lot of different looks in our division and a lot of stuff to deal with. Uh, I do want to ask you about growing up uh, in the Southland, La Habra, California, correct? Yep. That's uh, less than an hour away from SoFi Stadium. Uh, how glad are you to be in a position where you can begin your professional career in an area where your friends and family can support you and come watch? Uh, it's really awesome, actually. I mean, the funny thing is my parents moved to Idaho like five years ago. I was in college, so mm. they're up there. But uh, I still have like a bunch of family down here. My wife's whole family's here. And it's nice being able to have them like come over or go see them so they can see their kids, see their grandkids too. And it's nice just being around like friends from high school. You know, it's, it's, it's nice being home. So. And you did marry your high school sweetheart, right? So it's home for her yep. as well. Yeah. She went to La Habra high school as well. Her parents and, are still there. And you have two children now, Greg? Yes. Two, How old are they? Kids. We got a two and a half year old boy named Colt. And my daughter, Kayla is 14 months now. Mm-hmm. So we got two toddlers running around. What are Colts measurables? Is he going to be a four or a five-star defensive lineman? Do you think? Ooh, I think he's going to be a five-star DN. He's, he's got a little, like he's a little tall, skinny guy. So I'm thinking he's going to be an edge rusher. I like it. <laughs> What's Greg Gaines like as a father? You said you can uh, be kind of mean and nasty in the trenches on the <laughs> field, but you yeah. really have a different switch at home. For sure. Yeah. I'm a, I like to think I'm a good dad, but. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm glad that they're so close to you and that you're able to make your home in Southern California and they can come support you at SoFi. It's time for our closing segment now, Greg. It's called Three and Out. Uh, I've got three final questions for you. And if you get all three answers correct, I'm going to make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. Same for your previous teammates who have come on and any who come on subsequently. We do appreciate you taking the time out of your week. Are you set for question number one? How does a 300 pound defensive tackle pull off cliff diving? <laughs> you just got to jump. <laughs> you know, it's not the jumping I'm worried about. It's the landing. How does that go? Uh, you just got to like do like a pencil dive in there. Try not to hit your butt on the water. Would, that's not an ideal. Feet first, not head first. I like that key. Tell us a little bit more about uh, what you used to do in Mont Lake going off the, uh, the bridge next to, next to Husky Stadium. <laughs> we uh we just hang out there and barbecue by the Montlake Bridge and we we're just like let's try jumping off that thing because we were we'd go like to other we'd go like to the rivers and lakes and stuff and there'd be places to jump in and like we just kept wanting to one up it so we were having a barbecue one day and like me Vita and Tani Tupo were just like you guys want to jump off the bridge and we did it measured at 46 feet. Is that the highest point you have tried or would be willing to try? Uh, I think it's like 65. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank you for correcting me then. I, I, don't, I don't want to shortchange you. It's 46 feet of clearance underneath, uh, but there's another like 20 feet of bridge. Makes sense. I'll never be able yeah. to drive across that going to UW again without thinking about <laughs> that. All right. You're one for one. And you even issued a correction. Good for you. That's a bonus point. Question number two, Jalen Ramsey pulled up to last weekend's game in a very nicely tailored mariachi outfit. I wonder, do you yeah. think you could pull off that look for our next Vamos Rams game? Ooh, I don't know if I'm the guy for it. I don't know if I'd look too good in that, that blue suit. Blue's not shocked, my color. <laughs> how shocked did he look though? That was, it was pretty cool. He walked in the locker room and he had a cool car too. I didn't even notice that. I saw that coming out. You know, LA Rams car. Yeah, he looked good. It was, that was a cool little outfit. Yeah, played really well, too, in that victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Question number three. If I'm correct, you followed uh, Coach Chris Peterson from Boise to Washington, right? And initially, you're going to be a yep. Bronco, ended up as a Husky. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, now he's, he's a really good TV analyst. I don't want to shortchange him there, but I, I wonder, knowing him as you do, is he ever going to get back in the game, or is he retired, retired? Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't see the retirement coming. I just kind of... That threw me off for sure. I didn't expect that from him, but I don't know. I don't know if he'll get back in. I feel like he's the kind of guy that's going to do what he says he's going to do. So I don't know. We'll see. 
Well, he's good at the TV thing and it's a pretty good life. So uh, I'm sure there'd be a lot of programs willing to have him and some vacancies popping up even early here in this season. But uh, looking forward to the rest of Chris Peterson's television and or coaching career. Greg, we appreciate you uh, carving out some time for us. It really is great to get to know you better. I uh, wish you the best this week against the Arizona Cardinals and throughout the 2021 campaign. All right. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. I'm JB Long and this is Rams Reveal.